talking some Gamecock baseball, throw in a few other things as well with our good friend John Whittle. Always a pleasure to have him on on the beat covering Carolina athletics for the Big Spur. Uh, how are you, sir? It's been a been a few weeks since we've had you. Did you survive the rain delay last night? <laughs> all 15 minutes of it, I, I was able to make it. The uh, all uh, shoot, I don't know how many pitches it was. Uh, actually, I got that in front of me. 226 pitches from from South Carolina's pitchers last night and uh, 205 from from uh, Presbyterian. Those The 15 minutes was fine. The 420-something <laughs> pitches, those were – those, those those weren't all great yeah i can i can believe you uh coach kingston said sometimes it happens that's sort of the message i've been saying uh, here to the audience in the early going but uh, as elijah pointed out there were uh, a lot of free passes issued by carolina last night so on on the john whittle scale of one to ten with pitching concern in the midweek uh, last night was what um probably zero yeah. i mean maybe one um i mean Listen, Eddie Copper's been great all year. You know, he did. He wasn't great last night. Um, you know, I mean, I think I think the Roman Kimball concern in, in general. I, I don't know if he's a midweek pitching concern, but I think the the Roman Kimball concern is is uh, is is there right now. But um, you know, I, he had a guy making his his uh, debut coming off of Tommy John from a little over a year ago. You you got a, a, a freshman who's making his second appearance. Um, who was who was uh, you know missed all the whole fall with a back and 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 has only thrown two thirds of an inning or an inning um, so far this year. Uh, you got a guy in Sam Simpson who's been and respectfully to the kid. He's been hurt since he's been here, and you know you don't know how much you're going to get out of him anyway. Like I mean, the, the rest of the guys were fine. Like it, it, it wasn't. I, I didn't think it was a big deal at all. I, I, I think I think the biggest concern coming out of last night was I think they felt like they had Roman Kimball in a little bit better place than what he looked like last night. Mm. And, you know, he, he goes and gets that, that strikeout to, to end the third inning, uh, strand a couple runners on base, uh, and then throws 14 or 12 balls out of 14 pitches. I, I, I think that's really the only concern uh, out of out of everything that went on last night. Well, and, you know, we talked about, you know, the the pitching, but there is, you know, scoring 19 runs is pretty impressive too, especially right. considering Cole Messina got a night off behind the, behind home plate, basically. You know, I know he, he uh, um, had five at-bats, but Dalton Reeves came in there as a, as catcher and played really well against his old team, uh, Lexington County Blowfish legend Dalton Reeves, two of four, <laughs> six RBI, two home runs as well. What's I mean, how big is that to have a guy like Dalton Reeves be able to come in spell uh, Cole for a night behind the plate as a catcher and then be able to give you that much production at the plate, especially considering we haven't gotten to talk about a player like Dalton Reeves a lot this year. Yeah, and first of all, it's, it's great news that Cole Messina didn't have to catch those 226 pitches last night. I mean, like that's that's the biggest deal out of all of it. You, you very rarely give him a day off um, from behind the plate, but you're, you're glad you did on this one. Uh, with, with the way that game went last night, so I'm I'm sure he's very thankful this morning, um, you know, to not have those knees feeling like they would. Uh, but but Dalton, you know, so, sometimes it's just nice to have an old guy. And and Dalton, like you said, we haven't really talked about him a lot. Um, he's he uh, I, I've I've liked him a little bit more as an offensive player versus versus behind the plate. Um, but you know, he he did fine back there handling. Handling those guys, he did. He did fine. Uh, I mean, I I think if Cole Messina is behind the plate, you probably don't have 13 walks because Cole Messina is an elite guy defensively, and that's another part of the reason why my concern level is, is really low uh, on, on that stuff. But you know, Dalton did did okay back there, and he obviously had had six RBIs with those couple of home runs. But you know, he's been around the block a, a little bit. He's he's played at two different schools, including you know Presbyterian uh, for a couple of years, and. And uh, I, I think that was a very wise move last night to, to give him a game back there because there's there's really not a ton of difference between him and, and Ryan Bakes from a skill set of where they are now. Like Ryan Bakes, I think, is going to be a, a really, really good player at South Carolina in time. Uh, but they're, they're probably not uh, real different right now in terms of, in terms of production. 
uh, between those two guys. So, you know, I, I like uh, giving Dalton that start against his old team and obviously had a huge day. Talking to John Whittle, the Vicksburg, Carolina beats PC last night, 1914. They'll be in Tuscaloosa this weekend. We'll, we'll get John's take on that one in just a second. But let's go back to the weekend sweep of Vanderbilt and the importance of it, John, especially considering that Carolina also swept a doubleheader to start the series after Friday night's rain. Um, how much of this production did you see coming against a team like Vanderbilt? How impressive was it considering that Mark and the staff have still had some some tinkering to do with, with this lineup and personnel. Yeah, and I, I think they're pushing some of the right buttons at the right time. You know, Blake Jackson has gotten in there, and, you know, he's just – he he's one of those guys who South Carolina's, you know, really good Omaha teams. They, they've, they've always had a couple of couple of guys like that, just kind of gritty, kind of uh, dirtbag, tough-out kind of guys. Um, you know, he, he didn't move the baseball enough to start the year and, and got replaced. And, and, uh, but, but now he's, he's back in there. And I, I think he adds a little bit of, a, a little bit of toughness to the lineup, a little grittiness to the lineup. And, and I, I think that's something that was, was really needed. Uh, so I, I mean, I think they're pushing some of the right buttons, Tyler Causey and Gavin Casas. I think they figured out that, that platoon a little bit, Kennedy Jones and his split up, um, Messina and, and Petri and the, in the batting order, I think that was a really good move. So they're they're pushing some of the right buttons right now. But um, you know, just just on the whole, I, you know, I, I this is this is what I thought the lineup would look more like. You know, going into the season in terms of production, not necessarily in terms of structure, but in in terms of production. Like the last ever, ever, dating back to that Sunday game against Ole Miss, they looked about like I thought they would. Now that being said, it's a six six game stretch. Um, it, at this point, so you know they need they need to keep replicating it and keep producing that. You know they had about 20 games where where things weren't going so great. Um, so you know six is really good, but you got to keep building on on that from from where they have been. So uh, I, I really like where this team is right now offensively. Parker Nolan, you know he may have gone one for five last night, but he hit some balls really really hard, uh, including the home run to start the game. Um, I think he's in a really good spot. You know, uh, Ethan Petrie is in a really good spot. Um, you know, I, I think there there are a lot of positives right now going on with this lineup offensively. And then, you know, one of my favorite takeaways from the weekend series against Vanderbilt was, you know, Tyler Pitzer getting to go out there, get a start, nine strikeouts, one walk, became the SEC freshman of the week for picking up multiple wins during the week. But what type of re uh, revelation has he been for this team? Um, in terms of maybe molding out the the weekend rotation, I, I, I tell you, so, um, they've they've had some guys who have who have been really good on the mound, who you didn't know you were going to get quite that much out of, um, you know, this season. Whether it's Tyler Pitzer, or Garrett Ganey, or Parker Marlott, or you know, even even Eddie Copper, um, you know, they've they've had some guys who have who have pitched, uh, you know, probably at least a little bit better than, than anybody thought. And, and, and Tyler's one of them. And, you know, he was uh, very much a freshman uh, coming into the season. He had some really good and some really bad in the fall. Like, he had strung together a couple of good ones in the fall. And then Garnet and Black's spring game, it was it was like he, he was like a deer in headlights. I mean, he balked a couple of times. He was, he was walking guys, throwing balls to the backstop, like, he didn't look like a guy who was ready for the prime time, um, and and that we're just talking about the 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 like fall World Series, and you, then you put him out there against Vanderbilt, and he looks like I mean he, he just he, he looks like a pro out there doing that, and um, you know never never flinched, never wavered, and that was one of the the most imp um, impressive performances from a freshman pitcher that I can think of, you know, in, in recent memory, and that's. That's Clark Schmidt throwing a lot of innings. That's Will Crow throwing a lot of innings. That's Jack Weinkoop throwing a lot of innings. I mean, that's you. You. He. He had one of the best performances uh, of any freshman pitcher that that I can remember at South Carolina. John, last thing for you. Got about a minute left. Give us uh, your quick scout of this road trip to Tuscaloosa, especially after the tide just got swept in Athens. Um, it's uh, Alabama's. Alabama's an offensive team. I mean, they're. They're okay on the mound, but but they're they're an offensive team. You know they they hit for a high batting average. They slug at a high rate. Bunch of doubles, bunch of home runs. Um, you know they they don't steal a lot of bases. They they've got 
they've got one guy who's got 10 and the rest have 10 combined. Um, but it's, but it's an offensive team. So, you know, it's going to be kind of strength versus strength this weekend. South Carolina's obviously been, been really, really good on the mound, save, save that game last night and, and maybe a couple of innings here or there over the course of the season. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a lineup that, that uh, has some length to it. Uh, you're going to see probably seven guys in the lineup, maybe, maybe eight, who, have, who are hitting over 300 on the year. And, you know, South Carolina's got probably four, maybe, I think four of those guys. So you're, you're going to see a, a, a good offensive team and, and see who see who uh, see see which aspect works works best. South Carolina's pitching or or what Alabama can do offensively. Great stuff as always, sir. We appreciate you, and we'll do it again soon. Absolutely appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me. That's our good friend John Whittle, John M. Whittle on Twitter, thebigspur.com.